Hey everybody, Mrs. Lawson, welcome back for week 10. Um, the videos are going to be uh, different instead of making kind of like one big video. I'm just going to make a few shorter ones. And so this video is set up for the idea of what you have already done in class. So I'm guessing most of us probably got through page two of the notes, all the classes. If you were absent though, then you do need to take these notes, all right? So if you did take page two notes, you may stop this video now and move on to the next video, which is going to cover pages three and four. All right. So again, just keep that in mind. All right. So let's begin. So in our first section, we are going to discuss the difference between a linear and an exponential function. And we're going to start with the graph. This is what I did in all the classes. And a linear function, this is just a line. It gets its counter kind of name because it's a line. Linear has the word line in it. And lines can go uphill, and then they can also go downhill, so we just want to make sure we draw that in there. Uh, remember, you can always pause. Um, this is an exponential function, so just some comments made in class. As some people said, you know, it spiked. I heard it looked constant here. It does look constant, but it actually is growing. It's just very slowly growing until it is constant. But it's a curve. Some people reference, like, this looks like a J, and then its counterpart looks like an L. Okay. And so I did say, you know, this is something that happened with coronavirus. You know, when it did come to Colorado, there were a few cases and it was kind of slow growing. But once it grew, it grew. And you'll hear them say in the news reports exponentially. So it would be nice if it could decrease really fast and then kind of level out and steady and disappear. Um, in a table, you want to look at the y values. And the only way this is possible is if your x values are going up by one. Okay. So if you see the pattern of your x values going up by one, which they will for us in our chapter, you want to focus on the y values and see how they're changing. And so since this is increasing, I look to see if it's adding or multiplying. And this one is adding. It's adding two every time. So I'm going to make a note of that. And you will know if it's a linear function if they add or subtract the same amount. each time. Again, pause the video because there's a little bit more writing on this page. Um, I'm going to keep going though. In exponential, you want to see, so this is also growing, but it's not adding the same amount. So this one's actually multiplying and it's multiplying by 3. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 3 is 36. And so you're going to know it's exponential if they multiply by the same amount. Uh, each time. Okay? So we've got tables, we've got graphs, and we've got the equation. So this equation should look familiar to you. This is in the form y equals mx plus b. So hopefully what you remember is that m is your slope, and slope is what we've been doing. That was our sixth showcase of learning. It's just average rate of change. But in a straight line, it's called a slope because this is a constant rate of change. In a curve, when we want to find the slope, you know, from here to here, we're finding it over this curve. And so when there's a curve, we change the word into average rate of change because even though we're seeing how it curves here, you know, it's kind of going up a little slower and then faster, we're going to average it out from here to here. So you have your slope formula where the y's are in the numerator and the x's are in the denominator. You should also hopefully remember the phrase rise over run. And then in this chapter, what we're going to be looking at is the slope is actually this, this amount that you add or subtract each time. So it's you where you add or subtract each time. Again, I know I'm going fast. You can always pause and get caught up. All right. Um, so when I start comparing these two, what I do notice is besides the fact that they both have y equals, they all both also have this b. And this b, whether it's in this function or this function, means the same thing. So b is known as your y-intercept. And in all y-intercepts, x is 0. Because if I go here, it's called the y-intercept because that's where this shape intercepts the y-axis. So 0, 1. 
And if I go to my tables, I know it's the y-intercept because the x value is always zero. All right. This one's a little tough to tell in the picture. Okay. Um, so for this chapter, the y-intercept when x is zero is going to be our beginning amount. And it's easy to remember that because b and beginning amount. All right. If you need some other tricks to remember, especially like in slope, um, b is also the number that's by, so b for by itself. And m is married, so m for married, to x. So a little trick to remember what's what. All right, so again, you can pause, get caught up. I'll continue. Um, the g, in g, there's two words that start with g in this chapter. There's growth factor and growth rate. And this is the growth factor. And you're going to know it's the growth factor because you're going to see it's this what we wrote up here. It's what you multiply by each time. So it's that multiply each time. So what we're going to do is go through the next couple of examples. And when you take your seventh showcase of learning, you're going to have to tell me is it linear or exponential? Tell me the y-intercept. What is m? What is g? Maybe write the equation. It just depends what you're be, what you're going to be given. So um, some things that we discussed in class is that uh, a linear equation could have some addition subtraction and exponential there's no addition subtraction. Here we talked about x is kind of like normal size it's on the same level or font size as uh, m and b and y where x here is a little exponent. Okay so I don't see an exponent here I do see addition this is going to be linear. Um, I don't see any addition subtraction, and I see an exponent that's going to make it exponential, and then this one is linear. So now I want to establish the y-intercept. So remember, the y-intercept is b. b is the number that's by itself. So you might want to write 1, but all y-intercepts, especially on the showcase of le learning, should be written as an ordered pair. And all x values are always 0, so this is 0, 1. Since it's a line, I get m. And m is the number that's married to x, so that's going to be my two-thirds. So we also want to start thinking about the shape as we go through these. So if I begin with 1, and then this is the number that I'm adding, I'm adding because it's positive, then when I think about the shape, it should be going uphill. So just some little thoughts to put in your head. On number 2, this is exponential. So, you know, we're still a little new to this equation, so I kind of want to look to see where b and g are. G is the number that's attached or grouped with X, and B is, I guess it's alone, I don't know. Um, but I want to look for that number, and the number for B is going to be 3, and as the ordered pair, it's 0, 3. And then G is the number that's grouped with X, so that's going to be 2. So if you think about these two shapes, if a number begins with 3, and then is multiplying, because that's what G does, multiplies by 2 each time, my shape should be getting bigger. So my shape would look like this. Uh, this is linear, so what's the number that's by itself is the 2, but we like to write it as the ordered pair, and the number that's married to x is 3. So again, if I begin with 2 and then I add 3 every time, again, I'm going to get this uphill line. All right, so that's the end of the first video. Um, so now we're going to cover pages three and four.